Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to the fourth video of the e-commerce with Golang backend project series. Now, I took some time off from uh, our third video uh, till the fourth video. I took about two, th three weeks off. And that's because um, I got a lot of comments on my YouTube channel saying that I don't have enough content for beginners. So I don't have enough beginner friendly content. So I thought, why not take some time off like about two, three weeks and create some beginner friendly content. And that's what I've done. And on my YouTube channel, there's now more beginner and intermediate uh, friendly content. So I just wanted everybody to come up to speed so that they could also follow along with projects like these, <clears throat> which are not exactly advanced, but they but you need a lot of understanding of Golang to be able to build an e-commerce with Golang, right? So I just wanted everybody to come up to speed. So this is why I took some time off. And also I get some messages on my LinkedIn saying that uh, don't exceed 10 minutes uh, for these video series. And that's because most of the people who are following my uh, channel are um, little senior developers, like two to three years, three to four years of uh, work experience. I won't call them like super senior, but like senior, uh, you know, in the sense they, they are from the industry, mostly people who are from a JavaScript or a Ruby background who are trying to transition into Golang. And then everybody's working basically. And then all they get is like half an hour to contribute to basically dedicate to uh, their learning, uh, Golang learning. And so a 10 minute video works out fine because then they can watch it, practice it, and then you know reinforce it in 30 minutes. And so those are the kind of uh, messages that I've received on LinkedIn. And I think that makes sense. And I'll try to make these videos 10 minutes each. Uh, now, this introduction that I gave you, which, which was like one minute or something, uh, ex exceeding that, I'll create like a 10 minute coding video, right, for every single uh, <clears throat> series now. So basically what I'm saying is that I'm back, right? So I'll continue the series. Uh, maybe here and there, I'll keep creating other videos also, but mostly uh, I'll try to create this, I'll try to complete the series uh, in, a, in a month's time at least right with other videos also but i'll i'll continue this i won't take a pause in this series now so in the last video in the third video we created models.go file <clears throat> and uh now i want to work on controllers because we have the routes we have the uh, models now now we have to figure out the things that are in between because from routes the uh, the control has to go to controllers from controllers uh, you know we'll take some help with middlewares or and then directly to models that's how the control is going to flow now um, I want to work on controllers in the sense that in this video um, I'm going to at least create the complete foundation of the controllers because we have three controllers files right one is controllers.go the other is cart.go the other is third is address.go and they have their uh, a lot of functions in between them and I want to create all these functions but firstly in this video at least I want to create the basics of those functions in the sense at least write down what the functions are going to be as in or what are the different functions that I'll need, right? So at least I want to lay down the foundation before you build the building, you lay down the foundation, right? So, so I'm just laying down the foundation of the controllers in this video. Uh, now, since the folder name is controllers, we want it all to be under package controllers so that from the other packages, from the other files, from the other uh, folders, we can easily access all the functions from any of these three files uh, just by calling controllers package. And obviously this file will have its own import uh, statement. Now the functions um, that I'll need here in the controllers file uh, will you, you will mostly be to do with uh, the users. So for example, let me give you an example. We'll have a login function, right? And before that we'll have a sign up function. Now since um, this, this video series is very similar uh, in terms of the project structure and the technologies that we're using with the JWT authentication tutorial series that I've covered and the restaurant management series that I've covered, right? So uh, it's, it's, all, it's all in the same universe because you're using the same technologies and the same way of coding. So that means that when I do my sign up and login, I need two functions. You already know that if you have seen those series uh, and that's the hash password series and verify password series. So what I'll do is I'll uh, keep some space for that as well. So we hash password and verify password functions uh, with sign up and login you also need one more function which is product viewer admin okay and then i'll need some more functions here to, uh, for my products because i don't have a separate product.go file because the functions that i have for products are very uh, limited so i'll just have a search product uh, function and I'll have search product by query function so search product by query function 
then um, that's that's about it so now what, what we'll do is uh, we'll start one by one and we'll try to at least um, you know complete the uh, scaffold or or the basic uh, what do you call it uh, structures of this function so for a function you'll have to write func in, uh, ahead of it and then uh, the function always accepts some things and it returns some things. In this case, it'll return a pass, uh, it'll return a string, and it basically accepts a password with the string, and that's when it'll hash that password. And there will be a function definition that we'll work on uh, very soon. Now the next function is verify password, so you'll have func verify password. It'll accept a couple of things. It'll return a couple of things. Okay. Now the verify password that you want to have is the user's password because it wants to compare both of these passwords, right? And the given password. So it'll compare both of these passwords and it'll give you that, uh, you know, true or false, a boolean, and it'll give you return the password, basically. <coughs> then the sign up function. You'll write func ahead of it. It'll say sign up. And it returns a gin handler. Gen dot handler fun. Login for login again you'll have um, the same structure. You'll have func login. This also returns gen handler dot handler func. Then you have your product your admin. Again returns a handler func and your search products just make sure when you have your search product function the s is kept so just write func here and it doesn't accept anything all these functions which are empty they don't really accept anything okay And then you have your search product by query. Here also S will be capital func search product by query. Gen dot handler func. So now what I've done here is uh, for the controllers.go file, I've at least written down all the functions that I need. Now, once you have the list of all the functions that you need, that obviously you need sign up login, inside sign up login, you need hash password, verify password, and for the products, you need these three functions. Right, so once you have this, then you at least have some clarity on where we are headed, right? And how, what all do we need to do? Um, and always, I always recommend this. So I always recommend creating all the folders that you have and then writing down uh, all the file names like I've done. Even though there's nothing in the file, at least I've written on that, you know, I'll need these files in the structure. And then um, I write down all the functions, at least the empty functions, uh, create them. And then I think about what the function definition will be and how the relationship will be between those functions. Um, <clears throat> this kind of get, gives you a little bit of roadmap and clarity on how you get started. Now we'll head over to our card.co file and this also again has its own, uh, it's part of the package controllers. It has its own import, uh, um, it'll have its own import statements. And um, the functions that we'll have will be the typical functions that come with a cart in an e-commerce platform, which is adding to cart, like for example, adding to cart. So we have add to cart. And uh, you have remove item from the cart. So you just call it remove item. So I'll say remove item. Then we'll have get item from the cart. So func get item from cart. And it was able to automatically complete the statement for me. Right, func, handler func. Then you'll have buy from the cart. So if you want to proceed and you want to buy from the cart, this is the function that'll help you do that. And then you'll have instant buy, something called instant buy.
And that's about it. Those are all the cart functions that we need. Then you'll go over to your address.go file. And here, again, you'll have package controllers. You'll have import statement. And you'll have your uh, functions now. So the first function is that obviously if the user does not have an address in the beginning, so you will have to add the address for him, uh, for that user. So it'll say add address. Again, it's gen dot handler. The second function that you'll have is edit. If you want to edit the address, so it'll say edit address it does the same things and since we have both home and work address separate so we have edit work address gen dot handler func and then you have your delete address functions func delete address dot handle func so these are the three files and these are all the functions in those files that we'll have and in the next uh, video we'll either create uh, middleware related functions like this uh, foundation or we might start actually working inside these functions and start writing the definitions. But at least uh, now you have some clarity. We have the main.go file, we have our routes file completed, we have our models completed, and we have the complete controller structure ready. And in the next video, which is going to be tomorrow, because I'm trying to keep uh, you know not a lot of the distance between these videos now, because since they're shorter now, right? Uh, we'll, like I said, we'll either start working in the in these functions or we'll create, uh, we'll start in middleware.go. Uh, file. So I hope uh, you le you're learning something in this new series and I have more than 100 videos on Golang projects and uh, you know explanation series, uh, videos on my channel. Do check them out. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.